semifinal of the evening will start in about six minutes from now. So we'll get Tony Salido here. Tony, great to have you back. And looking forward to a great game tonight. Thank you, Gar. I'm sure it will be. I think these teams are a little bit more evenly matched than their last game. Uh, so it should be exciting. I just wonder about the fatigue again. We've never had a situation like this that I can recall where you have to play two games in a day. Because of the storm last week, all the games were uh, postponed until this week. Four games today as opposed to two a night last week. Grand Coast Pacific playing their second game of the day. And they only had seven guys in the first game. And they hopefully did get rest over the last hour and 40 minutes, or it's going to be tough for them. Yeah, but if they had to come back and play again, they'd have been so tired, they wouldn't have been able to win the game, you know what I mean? So, so That was a great game. I'm not sure if you got to watch that, but they barely held on at the end. Yeah, I know. I thought they won by two. 102-99, they, they won by three. three. Yeah, okay. They're up by 22, and then that's who were trailing by two. Down the stretch with about 30 seconds left. Uh, missed free throw, a missed open layup, and then uh, Grantville came back and capitalized, got a couple of baskets down the stretch. Stan Harding with a basket of free throws that really helped. That was a great game, so we'll see if that'll come into play tonight. And then you get a team in chosen few. They're missing Bill Amos, one of the best players in this league, so I'm really curious how they will play tonight. Well, speaking of Bill Amos, I went ahead without your permission and picked an all-star team. <laughs> And of course, Bill Amos is on. Oh, of I would agree with that. Uh, I picked Leon Ballard. I I picked Michael Thomas from UH. I picked Wally Kulabali from Chaminade. I picked Chris, Christian Stanhart. You know? I was waiting for him. Uh, and of course, Bill Amos. Yeah, uh, you know, Christmas is such an offensive player. When you. When you talk to people, they say, oh, he shoots all the time. You know how hard it is to get somebody to shoot all the time? Especially if they make him. He, he, he leads the league in free throws. He, he leads the, the league in, in scoring. 45, 45. points games. I mean, the kid's a machine. I don't mind him shooting a lot. If you're going to make him, that's a big difference. And we are back here for the first semifinal of the evening here with Gary Dickman and Tony Salito. Grand Coast Pacific won the first game, 102-99. They are getting ready to play Chosen Few who apparently is without their head coach. And John Lane, I mentioned earlier, one of the older players in the league, he's going to be a player coach tonight. Well, it, you know, if, if something happens where they happen to play one of the better games they ever play, that shows you the value of a coach. <laughs> so I'm really at a loss <laughs> to say. I'm surprised they didn't ask you to coach them. <laughs> and we're getting ready for the jump ball. We're going to get ready for the starting lineup. Hopefully we'll get some of the coaches over here. We are hoping to get John Lane and Alan Silva over here for a quick word as they are giving last instructions to their team. The winner of this game will play in the championship game next Saturday night, 7 p.m. right back here at Manoa Rec. And John Lane's going to come over here in just a minute. And one of the uh, advantages and honors of being the coach, you also get to go on TV with us and get to say a few words. <laughs> and it gets to start if he makes the line. Are you making the lineup, John? Yes, sir. Let's see started? if we can get him a microphone. That's what I like. Baby. 17 years. Sorry. <laughs> so John Lane is joining us now. We'll get, we'll get the mic. You guys can share the mic. And I was saying before the game that I think you played here at least 15 years. You just mentioning 17 years you played in this years. league. Yeah. Out of 17 years, how many times have you coached? Uh, maybe a total of 10 games throughout. Oh, you have coached that many. Okay. Yeah. You know, coaches had emergencies. What is your um, strategy tonight because you're playing a team that already played earlier today you're going to try to run and gun them and we yeah. won't tell them what you're saying but you wonder about fatigue with them yeah we're definitely going to implement that strategy uh, even if they didn't play a game previously we still would uh, try to do that um, they have a couple older guys we have a bunch of young guys we have a much deeper bench they're only like six deep we got 10 guys a couple young kids we're going to run and you're missing Bill Amos one of the best players in the league that's got to be yeah. tough to overcome it is um, but I think that all year long we always try to uh, come into every game with a team philosophy so hopefully we can overcome that now let me ask something John what is your opinion about the way Christian Stan Harding is I think that he's a very good dominant offensive player he really wants to get to the line. He lives at the charity stripe. He's going to try to draw contact. We're going to play tough D, and we're not going to body him. I guess you don't have to worry about playing time. You can put yourself in any time you want. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Well, good luck, John. Hopefully, okay. we'll talk Thank to you later. You and we're going to get a quick minute here with the Grand Co. Pacific coach, Alan Silva, who won the first game of the afternoon. And Alan joins us. And, Alan, we'll give you a couple of questions. I know you got the game to start, but tough first game. You guys were up by 22, and then we're trailing with less than a minute left. How scary was that? Uh, pretty scary when you don't play defense in the second half. <laughs> and what did you tell your team after the game and the rest period? You guys had an hour and a half between uh, games. Just get some rest, get a lot of water in their system, a little snack here and there. But we have to play well. And um, John Lean is coaching his team right now. Okay? And um, 
Is fatigue a factor? Too, yeah. Yeah. Is now fatigue going to be a factor? Let me ask you, Coach. Yes, sir. How much do you think playing the first game at 4 o'clock or whatever it was is going to affect you playing this game? We played at 3 o'clock, and, um, you know, these guys are pretty young guys. Even Jeremy Harris, uh, Robinson, he's still pretty young. And hopefully um, they just they got their legs back right now. And we're going to have fun because um, Pete over here, number 20, uh, 22, is, he, run, he runs. We're going to stop him. Good luck. Okay, well, you get ready for the game. Good. Thanks, Alan. Good luck. Okay, At least you. you're 1-0 oh today. Good job. Good job. And we're getting ready for the jump ball here at Manoa Rec. As we look at the starters for Chosen Few, Kyle Pape will be in the game. And they've also got uh, Kaipo Paley. Sorry about that. He will be jumping. Kyle Pape, as I mentioned. Caleb Spencer also in the game. John Lane is starting. And Jace Tavita, former University of Hawaii player. For Grand Co. Pacific, same lineup as the first game. Jeremy Robinson, Joshua Burnett, uh, Christian Stan Hardinger, and we'll get the other starters in just a second. It's like Sean Cadell might be starting in this game, and we'll get the fifth starter in just a second. Jeremy Robinson. The jump ball. Yeah. And Farbot Farman from HBU, he's getting the jump ball. Joshua Burnett gets the jump, comes up running into the paint, tries to give it to Farman, loses the ball. Tavita with the steal, comes in all the way, gives it up to Caleb Spencer, nice layup, shows a few leads, 2 nothing. Jeremy Robinson bringing the ball up past midcourt, covered by Caleb Spencer. Looking for some screens. Farman had a terrific game in the first game, had six blocks, five of them in the first five minutes. Stan Harding with the ball, goes in for a little scooping layup, and he makes the basket, almost traveled there, but he gets away with it and gets the two points, 2-2. Two -two. Player coach John Lane with the ball. He gets it to Caleb Spencer, drives in the paint. Little jump shot from six feet, it is off. Farman with the rebound over to Jeremy Robinson. Gives it to Stan Hardinger in transition. And they call the offensive foul. Stan Hardinger put his arm out there, his left arm, which is kind of unnecessary. He would have either gotten the foul or the basket, but he sticks his arm out there. Easy call for the refs. John Lane with the ball, his player coach. He gets the start. Holds it over the right side, covered by Christian. Gives it over to Jace Tavita. Drives to the paint, pulls it back out, over to Kyle Pate. Covered by Josh Burnett. Paley from Roosevelt with the ball, gives it over to Spencer, back to DeVita. He drives to the basket, misses the layup. <clears throat> Late whistle, and there's a foul. And it looks like Jace DeVita will go to the free throw line for two shots. And that is the first team foul on Grand Cove Pacific. Second team foul on Grand Cove Pacific. Well, you know, what, what Christian Stan Hardinger has done, he, he played in the league last year, so he said, when I come into the league this year, I'm going to drive and score on every single I did a lot of that for you, Ace, <clears throat> then a lot of that in the summer league as well. <clears throat> Robinson forces up the three. It is no good. Christian Stan Hardinger battling for the rebound. He gets fouled by Pally from Chosen Few. 2-2 two, two the score, 18-28 left in the first half. Robinson inbounding. Tries Christian down low, almost out of bounds. Gets the ball into the basket, little spin move to his left, and he gets fouled. We'll go to the free throw line for two shots. He's kind of mad at himself for not making that basket. Like you said, Gary, the kid really is an offensive player, and he's going to go to that basket, come hell or high water, and he's very, very talented. I think his game, he's, I think he's going to Europe to play. And, and I think his game will get better as he gets older um, because he'll, he'll get more experience. And um, I'll, I'll tell you, if somebody's look, looking for an offensive player, he's very good. At it. Yeah, he's still undecided where he's going to play next year. He's looking over his options, but he will know pretty shortly as he makes one out of two foul shots. 3 2, Grand Co Pacific with the lead. Kyle Pape with the ball. Covered by Joshua Burnett. Little screen there by Dan Carter now in the game for a chosen few. See, Farman with the rebound. I tried to talk to Josh. You cannot go under a pick. You just cannot. Not with Pate. You can't go under the pick. He'll shoot it every time. Jeremy Robbins with the ball. Covered by Caleb Spencer. Drives under the basket. Little reverse layup. It is up and in. And Grand Co. Pacific with an early 5-2 lead. 17.50 left in the first half. John Lane with the ball. Drives and only loses it. Cadell tips it away, but it goes to Caleb Spencer. He has it on the left top of the circle. Looking for a screen. Gets it by Carter. Holds it back out. Now covered by Farman. Still looking for somebody open. Drives in. 
and gets a layup, and Farman gets another block shot. Carter with the rebound, though, throws up a left-handed shot from three feet. It goes in, 5-4. Jeremy Robinson with the ball, past midcourt. Looking for Christian, covered by Dan Carter. Christian goes up with a left-handed shot. That is up and in. Christian Stanhardinger doing another good job early in this game. Kyle Pape with the ball, covered by Joshua Burnett. Picked by Carter, played at Kaiser High School. Caleb Spencer, three-pointer, it is an air ball. Joshua Burnett picks it up, brings it up by himself. One on four, basically. Stan Hardinger comes down, gets a little position down low, gets an easy layup as Dan Carter was out of position there. 9-4, Grand Co. He's so much better than the rest of the players in the league that he could score at will. Another block by Farman. He's done a great job all summer, and especially today in the first and this game. Burnett with the ball. Looking for Farman, who's post down low, covered by Tavita. And Farman has the easy height advantage, puts up a little right-handed shot, and it goes in 11-4. Granco not showing fatigue as of yet, that's for sure. Pape with the ball, covered by Joshua Burnett. Tavita at the top of the key, going for a three. Nothing but net for Jace Tavita. Did a good job shooting threes at UH. Wasn't a great free throw shooter, but did a good job shooting threes. Yeah, he's made 16 in the summer so far. He's actually number 17. Jeremy Robinson with the ball. He goes up for a three, and his shot has not been there from the outside today. Farman with the offensive rebound to Sean Cadell. Back to Farman in the corner. And Joshua Burnett is trying up. He throws up a three, and that goes in. And now it is 14-7 for Grand Cove Pacific. I think one of the things for a chosen few, they don't have a lot of hype. Jace Tavita is forced to cover Farbod Farman on defense, and that's going to be a tough task. As Tavita throws up another three, around the rim and out. Burnett with the rebound from Farman, brings it up a pass midcourt. Looks for Christian Stanhard doing it a post down against Carter. Christian throws up a shot, gets partially blocked. And Carter gets the rebound. Kyle Pape with the ball, advancing it up the right side of the court, covered by Jeremy Robinson. 14-7 with 15-16 left in the game. Second first half. Pape with the ball, gives it to John Lane, covered by Stan Hardinger. Pape drives to the left in the paint, dishes it out to Caleb Spencer for a three, and it is good. Nice shot by Caleb Spencer from the left corner, 14-10. I like him. I like him. He's a good, good player. player and a good basketball yeah, he's player. He's a good athlete. Ball. He's a very good athlete. Jeremy Robinson with the ball slowly crossing midcourt. And again, you can understand these guys being a little fatigued. They have seven players again, just like the first game. Although they had six to start the game. Chosen few swept the season series against Grand Co Pacific this year, winning both games. John Lane with the ball. Caleb Spencer on the right side by the three-point line. Gives it to a cutting John Lane. And he gets a little scoop basket. It goes in. And it is now 14-12. Alan Silva has seen enough as the lead has gotten a lot closer. Two-point lead. And with 14-24 left in the first half, Grand Co. Pacific lead is two at 14-12. And for Christian Stanhardinger, again, as you would expect, the leading scorer with seven points early in this first half for Grand Co. Pacific. And I, I might know earlier we gave Tony Toledo's all-star team. We might not have been on the air for all that. We're going to have Tony do that. In fact, if you want to go over that now, you can yeah, have okay. time in this timeout. Okay, I, I think I can do that if I can find my notes. Oh, yeah. Chosen few, I picked Bill Amos because he's such a great shot blocker. He really bothers people all the time. Grand Co. Pacific, I picked Christian Stan Hardinger. He averaged 45 points a game. How could you not pick sure. him? Solar Universe. I picked Leif Rodney. He had been had a, having a great season, and he didn't show up tonight. I really know where he is. He has to, he had to go back home. I'm not sure exact reason, but I understand he's back in the mainland. And yeah, I think he was one of the more improved, exciting players this league. And so to fill his place, I picked Derek Lowe. Der if, sure. If Derek Lowe ever came to every game, they'd be undefeated. Exactly. He hasn't made every game. He's a sure. terrific player. <laughs> and I picked Leon uh, Ballard from Clark Fatch, Clark Catch Fitness. Leon played. A Just great season. Over the yeah, years. great season. And I picked Michael Thomas from UH and Wally Kulabali from Chaminade. Definitely good because I wouldn't disagree with any of those. Come out of the timeout, Jeremy Robinson with the ball, holding it up. Goes to his right, looks for an opening, drives to the basket, throws up the shot, almost goaltending as the shot is out. But the putback is put in and is now 16 to 12, Grand Cole Pacific. Chase Tavita with the ball. 
Pulls it back out, covered by Stan Hardinger. Goes to the right, now covered by Farman. Caleb Spencer open in the right corner. He'll throw up another three, and it goes in. Great three-point shooting by Caleb Spencer, and this is now a one-point game, 16-15. Well, Jace Tavita found him, and talking to Jace, he told me he's going to go to Philippines and play ball. I've heard he might. That's great. So that's terrific for him. Surprised a lot of people, I think, in the senior year at UH. Stan Harding with the ball down low. Looks for a guy cutting, but he's not there open. He takes a shot himself, goes to the right, and banks it in. 18-15, Grand Cove Pacific. 13-15 left in the first half. Tavita drive. Farman got a piece of it, but a little too late. Got it off the backboard. They're going to call goaltending on that. Good call, but I love the aggressiveness of Farman in these games today. I want you to know I went to a number of HPU games, and he did not play nearly as well as he's been playing in, in this league. You know, his game definitely improved from last year. Sure. But in this league, he really plays. It. He's very big. He'll be a senior this year? No, he was a senior. Well, Farman gets the rebound, puts it up, it is out. And the loose ball is picked up by Chosen Few. And it is Chris Crawford picking up the ball from Campbell High School. Over to Kyle Pate, throws up a three, it is out. Robinson with the loose ball rebound. Gets it knocked out of bound by Ryan Reyes, who was checked in of the game for Chosen Few. So we got Chris Crawford and Ryan Reyes checking in the game for Chosen Few. Stan Hardinger with the jumper from the right side. It is out from the baseline. Carter with the loose ball rebound. Back over to Jace Tavita coming up the right side, covered by Burnett. Kyle Pape open for a three on the left, thinks about it, holds on to it, pulls it back out, gives it over to Tavita at the top of the key. He goes to the left in the paint, and a nice one-handed layup by Jace Tavita. <coughs> Doing a good job, and now Chosen Few has taken the lead, 19-18, to 18, their first lead of the evening. 12.09 left in the first half. Jeremy Robinson covered by Crawford. Screened by Stan Hardinger. Nothing there, he pulls the ball back out. Jeremy spins in the paint, nowhere to go, and they call it travel on Jeremy Robinson. He brought, brought it in, trying to draw either a foul or get an opening, neither was there, and he had nowhere to go but down and got called for the turnover there. 19-18, chosen few of the lead. Zach Busher in the game, one of the few times we've seen him in the summer league, he will be a walk-on for UH out of Iolani last year. Reyes with the ball, brings it out to Carter. And he misses his jumper. Crawford with the offensive rebound. Good hustle there. Reyes with the three. And it is good. And chosen few now up 22 to 18. <laughs> Got three uh, former high school players from last year in the game for chosen few right now. Burnett with the ball. Former high school player. Actually, he continued in prep school in North Carolina this upcoming year at Marino last year. Dan Harding with the shot from the right baseline, but it is blocked out of bounds by Dan Carter, I believe. Might have been Reyes. Cadell inbounding under his own basket. Gives it to Stan Harding, a throw up a 17-footer. It is short. Crawford with the rebound. Out of Campbell High School. Runs into Burnett, loses the ball. Cadell picks it up. Going down the lane, could have passed, took the layup and missed it. And he did have Burnett on the left side. Chidita now on the other way. Brings it to Crawford. Shot partially blocked by Farman, but it goes in. A little bank shot underneath the basket. 24 to 18. Now chosen few with the lead. And I think this is the fatigue factor a lot of us were wondering about after playing the first game today and only seven players for Grand Cove Pacific. Robinson drives in. And they, attention. and they haven't subbed yet. They haven't subbed yet. Yes, so no, that's I'm right. I'm sure they're a little tired. They've got Brian Mason on the bench. It looks like they're going to make their first substitution coming up. And they've got a player on the court, uh, by the scorer's table, ready to check in. And it could be for Jeremy Robinson at the free throw line. Misses the first of two shots. He'll go back for one more. Jeremy Robinson up for the second of two. And it goes in 24 to 19. And he will exit the game now for Grand Co. Pacific. And Kaika Phillips from Iolani making his first appearance of the evening. Another former high school player from last year. Eight, eight 
Stan Harding with a loose ball. Gives it over to Cadell. Cadell with the ball. <clears throat> Left side gives it to Farman down low. Sees Burnett with a little pass behind him, but is out of bounds. Burnett not quite expecting it. And chosen few will keep the ball. Busher into Tavita. Tavita bringing the ball up. Looks like he's bulked up a little thin. Lost some weight, but gotten a little stronger since his UH days. Covered by Kaika Phillips. Goes into the paint, left side, right-handed layup. It is no good. Ball is loose, goes out of bounds, and Jace Tavita trying to hold on to it, could not. And Grant Co. will get the ball. John Lane now coming in the game for Jace Tavita for Chosen Few. 24-19, Chosen Few with the lead. 9.50 left in the first half. Fidel through the lane, makes the shot, rolls around the front of the rim, and goes in. 24-21, Chosen Few. Lane with the ball, over to Crawford, left-handed three-pointer, and it is nothing but net. Chosen few expanding on their lead, 27-21. Grand what, Pacific. what a nice shot. Very nice. Cadell with the ball, covered by Zach Busher out of Iolani, now with UH. Dan Harding gets the ball, really doesn't have position, loses his footing, and the ball. John Lane picks it up for Chosen Few. He gives it to Pate. Upper um, Polly coming in for Chosen Few. Hypo Polly, former Roosevelt player. Now playing at Yakima Valley Community College. <laughs> Burnett has the ball covered by Busher. Pulls back to the free throw line, gives it to Farmon at the baseline. Eight foot shot is off, and they're going to call Christian for a foul. Got the offensive rebound, but as he got the rebound, he pushed Ryan Reyes clearly on the floor. Stan Hardinger takes his first rest of the uh, evening. He's a very demonstrative player. And he's actually had a few fouls today in the first game as well where he just pushed players out of the way, jockeying for a position. Refs are aware of that. Reyes with the ball, gives it to Kyle Pate. He throws up a two-pointer right, th right before the three-point line. It is nothing but net. 29-21, chosen few with the lead. Jeremy Robinson with the ball. Looks for a screen, but nothing there. Takes a three-pointer way out there. And a lot of shots by Jeremy tonight have been about six, seven feet in back of the three-point line. Burnett with a steal from Caleb Spencer. Drives in, knew he was gonna draw the foul as he throws up a shot. Foul on Caleb Spencer. We'll see if that'll be two shots for Joshua Burnett. I believe it will. And they're gonna say no, it was out of bounds. It was before the shot. Cadell and bounding underneath the basket, Sean Cadell. Finds Burnett cutting to the basket, nobody guarding him, but the ball is tipped away, and he will inbound the game again. I, I think Josh Burnett's decision to go to preps is a terrific decision. He needs another year under his belt. Sure. Playing with good players. Definitely. It's been fun watching him play. Robinson with the layup underneath the basket, throws it up. It is out. Farman with the rebound, saves it to Burnett for a three. And that hits the back of the rim and out. Kyle Pape really skying up for that rebound. Brings it up past midcourt. Fires Caleb Spencer for a three on the left side. That hits the rim and off. Sean Cadell from the Army gets the rebound. Slowly brings it up. Now passes midcourt. 7.42 left in the first half. 29-21. Chosen few of the lead. Gives it over to Jeremy Robinson. Kyle Pape covering him. Farmon about to set a screen. Robinson goes around it. Gives it to Burnett. Has about a free throw line a couple feet in back. Misses the jumper. Caleb Spencer with the rebound. Kyle Pape now with the ball. Covered by Jeremy Robinson. Polly with a screen. Polly with the jump shot from 14 feet. It hits the rim is out. Cadell with the rebound. Jeremy Robinson with another long three. And that shot has not been falling. It's basically past NBA three point line. Kyle Pape with the ball, taking his time, drives to the left baseline, finds John Lane. And it was a foul as Kyle Pape had the ball driving towards the basket on the left side. They will take it out of bound. Three team fouls on Grand Co. Pacific. Four, that is the fourth now on Grand Co. Four also on Chosen Few. Now, you know. We will get a timeout right now. What happened is that two or three years ago, that long three by Jeremy Robinson 
he made every one. He I would agree. score 50, 45 points. Now, now that he's a little older, they're not dropping as much, which is usual. Sure. It's usual. But um, he still keeps shooting them, so it's somewhat of a difficult situation. Sure, and Grand Cove Pacific, <clears throat> as a team, they only hit 48 threes this year. Yeah. They led the league, I believe, last year in threes made. And, you know, you got guys like Christian and Jeremy, but they're not hitting the threes as much. Not a bad number. But if you look at Chosen Few, they've hit 76 three-pointers. And Chosen Few averages about 84 a game. But Grand Cove Pacific, they average 99, but they're getting a lot of free throws, obviously, by Stan Hardinger, and a lot of, you know, shots right around the basket as he's driving to the hole. Well, I, I, it seems to me, I, I don't know what you think, they, they seem to be a little bigger than most teams. Oh, definitely, sure. You know, and, it helps them on the offensive And board. I'm sure that's why they shoot more free throws. They're forever. They can afford to. Yeah. Getting a lot more offensive rebounds as we're ready to start. Play John Lane, getting the ball by the right baseline. Covered by Kaika Phillip, coming in for Granco. And Reyes misses the left-handed scoop shot. Dan Harding with the rebound to Kaika Phillip. Covered by John Lane. Over to Sean Cadell, back to Jeremy Robinson on the right side, past the three-point line. Covered by Polly. Jeremy thinks about a shot, gives it to Burnett. He is open for three, he'll take it. And that hits the front of the rim and the back of the rim and is out. Kyle Pape with the rebound. Over to Caleb Spencer. He goes in for the layup. Right-handed layup is good for, for Caleb Spencer. You see that? It's a perf perfect example. He shoots and misses. He hangs his head, and the guy goes right by him for a layup. Right. Can't do that. Can't yep. do that. It's totally impossible. Stan Hardinger comes back and puts in a little two-foot shot from the right side, and there's now 31-23 uh, for Stan Hardinger. That is his 13th point of the game. John Lane with the ball for chosen few. Almost fouled by Burnetta, picks up the loose ball, gives it to Jeremy Robinson, who loses it to the Kyle Pape out of bounds. And the ref, I think the referees are going to get together on this. One referee said it is chosen few's ball, but that's a bad call. We saw it clearly that it should go to Grand Soul Pacific. And they are not over. There's no replay here. I mean, we have the benefit of that, even though we're not seeing it. But we saw that live enough that that was an incorrect call. John Lane with the ball, over to Kyle Pape. Covered by Burnett, back up to Caleb Spencer. He drives into the lane, and he is fouled by Sean Cadell before the shot goes up. Only the fifth foul, team foul, for Grand Co. So they will inbound the ball out of underneath the basket. Caleb Spencer leads chosen few at 10 points. John Lane tried to find Polly cutting to the basket, but Jeremy Robinson knocks it out of bounds. So they will inbound the ball again, chosen few, and John Lane. Well, you know what happened? Um, uh, Polly played at Roosevelt, and I thought he was a good player. I liked him. And then I retired, and he went to, ju he went to the junior college. I was disappointed because I thought he was good enough to play for I HPU. I high school, so I remember watching him in the state tournament yeah. in his senior year at Roosevelt. He was really good. It just gets to put back <clears throat> right there. Ten-point lead for Chosen Few, 33-23. Lane knocks the ball away from a kike of Phillip. Going up for a jump shot, tried to throw it off of him, and I guess he did, as Chosen Few will get the ball with Reyes about to inbound it, but another timeout called by Alan Silva. Well, you know what really disturbs me, Gary, as a coach? If you look at the rosters of all the teams, there's no local players on the team. None. H HPU doesn't have one single local player. In fact, you're talking you about the college team college don't have team. local players. The University of Hawaii has more local players than in, in Division II schools. That's ridiculous. I guess UH, you have Derby Enos, and he yeah. could be about it. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. I think the Division II, II schools, we, and I hate to say this because people think I'm patting myself on the back or something, but we played and won the national championship with four local kids. James Williams. Why would you think that is then now? I, I have no idea. You can't find tougher kids. Shane Takashita, toughest kid in the world. Mike McDaniel, he fight, he's a boxer now. He fights in that. Really? Yeah. He's unbelievable, the kid. I mean, those guys are terrific. And they all played, and they all scored, and we won. And I don't understand what you're telling me there's nobody that can play? I just wonder if the coaches now at some of these schools coming from the mainland not really being in Hawaii that long, maybe that's part of the reason they don't have the local players. Maybe not enough confidence right now. That's a, a good thought. However, I went to the games, and there's nobody in the stands. He's not even scouting them, you're saying? I mean, no, I mean, 
if, if you. Burnett picks up the loose ball for Granco. Pulls it back out. One on four. Drives a layup. And it goes in. One against four. Joshua Burnett with a nice scoop layup. Nice play, Closes the lead eight. Nice play, Josh. Paper the ball fouled by Burnett. We talk about Joshua Burnett. We understand that he was offered a walk-on, preferred walk-on at UH. Chose to go to prep school, though, in North Carolina. Well, do you know what a preferred walk-on is? Pref preferred walk-on means they won't cut you. That's all it means. You don't get any money. And it, they just won't cut you. So, I mean, it was no big deal. I, I, I thought, you know, Derby Enos, him, a couple kids, Caleb Gilmore, they, they could play Division II without even trying. Sure. They're f f terrific players. Great players. I mean, Kavika Smith, who's coaching Kyle Hale, he, he played two years at BYU and finished his last two years at UH. Come on. You can do whatever you're good enough to do. Caleb Spencer with the free throw line for Chosen Few. One and one, he makes the first one. As now, Grand Co Pacific had their 17 fouls, so Chosen Few in the bonus, getting one and one until three more fouls, but shooting free throws the rest of the half. Only 14 fouls, though, for Chosen Few, so Grand Co not at the free throw line for a while, if at all this half. Robinson with the ball for Grand Co. 34 25 is the score, 4 30 left in the half. Down low to Stan Hardinger, has got a height advantage or disadvantage, and he makes the shot and one. As again, chosen few trying really tough, but they don't have enough height. And with Christian Stan Hardinger, the tallest guy, I would have thought that maybe Polly would have covered him. He was not on that. Stan Hardinger makes the basket and will go to the free throw line to try to make this only a six point deficit. Stan Hardinger with 15 points. 16, more than half the points for Grand Cole Pacific. 34 28, 420 left in the first half. Kyle Pape bringing the ball up. Lane about to set a screen. Pape with the ball now covered by Phillip. Another screen covered by Burnett. Goes up for the three, misses it. Stan Harding with the rebound. He is fouled by John Lane. And that is a 16 foul. So they'll be shooting one and one the next time there's a foul for Grand Cove Pacific. Stan Harding are about to inbound the ball. Jeremy Robinson letting it bounce around. Picks up the ball now. <coughs> Approaching the four minute mark. Stan Harding will post low against Reyes. Goes up for the left handed shot and misses it. But Burnett puts up the follow up. Nice hustle and follow up by Joshua Burnett. Very closing the gap to four. Very good athlete. Very good. John Lane with the ball over to Spencer on the right side. Over to Reyes. Thinks about a three twice. Now drives into the lane. Gives it back out. Tavita back in the game. Spencer with the ball gives it over to Pape. He is double teamed in the corner. And they're going to call a timeout. Pape called a timeout before he might have lost the ball. He was double teamed in the corner. 3.29 left in the first half. 34 30. Chosen few. And we look at some of the scoring totals for Grant Co. As we mentioned, Christian Stan Hardinger with 16 points. Uh, next on the list, Jeremy Robinson with five, and Joshua Burnett with five. Four chosen few, Caleb Spencer with 10, the only player in double figures. Um, I want to say, I want to, I want to say a few things about two or three of the league, professional leagues here. Sure. Uh, and why things are so different, why discrepancy uh, is between the MBDL and the NBA. It, you know, it, it, they don't make as much money playing as a person does who works at McDonald's. Sure. The highest salary is twenty-five thousand. The next highest salary is nineteen, and the next highest salary is sixteen. That's it. No more. So, you know, when a guy disguises, with dis decides to play, he's playing for one reason, because they can go watch him play and take him up if he does well. Sure. And of course, they all think they can do well. So. John Lane with the jumper, it is off as the shot clock expired after the shot. <clears throat> Robinson with the ball, brings it up court. Left side, cuts it to right in the paint. Nothing there, but he puts up a left-handed shot. Anyway, it goes in, and now it is 34-32. Grand Co getting a second win here as we get to the three-minute mark and making this a ball game again. Chosen Few had a 10-point lead just a few minutes ago. Kyle Pape with the ball, covered by Cadell. Drives baseline, nothing there. Spins to his left, blocked by Cadell. Stan Hardinger picks up the loose ball, finds Jeremy Robinson. 
<coughs> throws up a three, misses it. Luckily gets his own rebound drive to the baseline. Finds Cadell cutting in the lane. <coughs> that shot is off. Robinson with a tip in, that is out. Tavita picks up the loose ball and it goes out of bounds. <laughs> and it is gonna go to chosen few. As Christian Stan Hardinger for a second said no, loud, rather loudly, but then stopped complaining. Realized the referees were right. John Lane with the ball now. Chilled, covered by Kaika Phillip. Back to Davida. Over to Caleb Spencer. 12 footer. Goes around the rim and out. Stan Harding with the rebound. Gives it back to Jeremy Robinson as they look to tie this game up with about 2.10 left in the first half. Robinson taking his time, finds Stan Harding with a big height disadvantage. Throws up a little scoop shot, didn't really go up high, went down low and it was off. Tavita with a loose ball, goes in for the dunk, he misses it, Pape with a rebound, he misses the left-handed shot, and Robinson picks up the loose ball again. Cadell with the ball, three-point shot, top of the key, nothing but net, and Grand Cole Pacific, just like that, has regained the lead, 35-34, with about minute 40 left in the first half. John Lane with the ball. Goes behind his back, almost loses it. Finds Spencer. Nice little shot by Caleb Spencer as he drives to the basket on the baseline. And now they chosen few regain the lead by one, 36-35. Very nice shot, very, very nice shot. Great body control, that kid, yeah? Stan Hardinger dim, and he gets a height advantage, taking advantage of and shoots over Ryan Reyes, who, let me see what he is listed as. He is listed as 6'2", so Christian has about seven, eight inches on him. 18 points for Stan Hardinger. Get close to the minute mark of the first half, Spencer with the ball. Shot clock down to 15. Finds Pape in the right corner for a three, it is short. Stan Hardinger picks up the loose ball over to Jeremy Robinson, taking his time. Crossing midcourt right now, covered by Reyes. Stan Hardinger now covered by Caleb Spencer. He's a little bigger and stronger than Reyes. And he's showing it now. Those guys are really going at it. And they call the foul on Spencer. He is mad, but a good call. And now they call a technical on Caleb Spencer. He and Stan Hardinger battling down low, kind of throwing elbows, but Caleb Spencer definitely got a little bit too much in there. Foul, and now the technical on Caleb Spencer. And that's exactly what Christian does. Exactly. Frustrates people. No, absolutely. You know, I talked to him last year and he said, you know, you're an all-conference player if you don't fall down every time you get the ball. Sure. He's, he's, he hasn't fallen down yet. And I'm a little surprised that he is not shooting the technicals, although Jeremy Robinson does make the technical shot. Christian Stanharding are shooting 80%. I think, I think Jeremy Robinson. Coming up with a second tee. It oh. is short. Oh. And now Stan Harding are coming back to the free throw line for Therapy. two shots. That should be a one-on-one. 38-36 is the score. 34 seconds left in the first half. Grand Co. Pacific with a two-point lead. Stan Hardinger makes the third of the three throws in this scenario. Sequence here. Three-point lead, 39-36. Number two for Christian. It is nothing but net. 40 to 36. As Stan Hardinger now hits uh, 21 points. 20 points. 20 points. Half the points for Grand Co. Already? Already. Jeez. Almost close to his average. John Lane with the ball. We get ready to end the first half. They will not be able to run out the clock. Chosen few. 15 on the shot clock. Three second differential on the shot clock and the game clock. Tavita with the ball. Covered by Robinson. Drives in the lane. Gives it over to Reyes. Over to Pape. He drives in the lane again. Tries a shot. In and out. Tries to get the rebound and picks it up. Throws up a shot at the buzzer of the half. Hits the front of the rim and it is out. Grand Co. Pacific holding on to the lead, 40 to 36. We are at the half here at Manoa Rec. Want to let everybody know if you are going to come down. And uh, we've got spam musubi, chili and rice, hot dog here at the concession stand. If you come by our table, we've got really little candy bars here if you'd like to share with us. Having a great time here. We're getting ready for the second half of the first semifinal game. And again, Grand Co. Pacific with a four point lead. Scoring leaders, as I mentioned, Grant Co. is led by Christian Stan Hardinger with 20, Jeremy Robinson with eight, four chosen few, Caleb Spencer, the only player in double figures with 12, Jace Tavita with seven. 
<clears throat> Tony Toledo here with Gary Dickman. Tony, if you're the coach of Grand Co. Pacific, what are you telling your team at halftime? Well, I, I think they're doing all right. I mean, I think they're playing. This is a well-played game, 40, 40, 40 points, 36 points. It's okay. I hey. mean, you have to be careful that you, you take good shots, and I would like to see more free throw shots. They're well, they one and one in the last two minutes. If you're a chosen few, John Lane doing the player coach responsibility today, what do you tell your team? Well, I, if I was John Lane, I'd tell him to pick the tempo up and run like hell. They're not nearly as quick as, as, as chosen few. Not at all. So they walk. They walk and they don't get back on de defense. And I think that he can take advantage of that by running all the time. And he said that before the game he was going to try to run, especially with a team that already played again. Remember, the two winners of the first game yep. are playing twice tonight. Grand Co. Pacific won a, a beautiful game right down the stretch. 102-99 over Walt Strategy Partners, a game that went down to the last second. So this is their second game, only seven players, and you would think they would try to maybe run on them. Maybe that'll be the strategy for the second half because we know they've got to be a little bit tired. Well, what do you think? What do you think? If I'm John Lane, I would try to run. Yeah. Again, just try to get these guys tired. Knowing at time they could walk the ball off, showing a little fatigue, I would run as much as possible on Grand Co. Uh, absolutely. No question about it. We've got about five minutes left before the second half will start. Again, there's another game coming up. If you're at home watching and you want to come on down at 7.30, we will have the second semifinal. That'll be Clark Hatch Fitness against Solar Universe. Two really good teams, the second and the fourth seed in the regular season here at the NCAA Summer League. So you can come on down for that. The championship game next Saturday at 7 o'clock right here at Manoa Rec. The winner of this game and the winner of the next game will play in the championship. Look forward to that as well. Yeah, terrific. We're going to take a little break and uh, get ready for the second half. We'll be back in about five minutes and hope for another exciting finish here at Manoa Rec for the NCAA Summer League on Olelo TV. We are here, second half underway right here. Gary Dickman and Tony Salito for the first semifinal of the 2014 NCAA Summer League of Manoa Rec. 40 to 36 is the score. Grand Co. Pacific with the lead. Ball is knocked out of bounds. John Lane, player coach for Chosen Few. They were without their normal head coach, Dave Patterson, and he has been the player of the coach tonight. He inbounds the ball. They lose it underneath the basket. Jeremy Robinson picks it up for Grand Co. Pacific. The winner of this game will play in the championship game next Saturday at 7 o'clock. Grand Co. Pacific won an earlier game today, a quarterfinal game, 102-99 <clears throat> in a barn burner over Welch Strategy Partners. Stan Harding with the ball down low, over to Burnett for three, Bates puts it up. Around the rim and out, Farmon with the rebound, loses it, but Stan Hardinger picks it up. Back to Jeremy Robinson, another long three, and another miss for Jeremy Robinson. Stan Harding with the rebound, he is fouled, and he hits the ground finally, as Tony Toledo predicted. Come on. Same starters that started the game for both teams. And I believe that foul is on Kaipo Holly, number 50. Jace Tavita gets called for the foul. One player we haven't seen here tonight is not in the tennis, not sure why, but one of the walk-ons for UH, Brooks Steptow. Done a pretty good job in the summer league, and he is not here. Some team, because of the game being played a week later, some of their players either went back home, <clears throat> ready to come back for the school session or how to play overseas, like Bill Amos, who is not here. Stan Hardinger makes the second of two free throws, 42-36 for Grand Co. Pacific. Jace Tavita brings the ball up. Moves to the right, now goes into the lane on the left side, over to John Lane. He goes into Vita, back outside, back of the three-point line, the left corner, covered by Stan Hardinger. Looking for somebody to cut, nobody there. Holds on to the ball, he throws up a three, in and out. As Farmont with another strong rebound, almost loses the ball, falling to the ground, but gives it to Robinson, over to Sean Cadell. Over to Burnett, throws up a three. It is off Caleb Spencer with nobody back on defense. As Burnett tries to get back, but Spencer misses the layup. And he misses the second layup. And he misses the third layup. <coughs> Caleb Spencer, a good player, but misses three layups on the same possession for a chosen few. Jeremy Robinson makes a little scoop reverse layup for Grand Co. Pacific. They are now up by eight points. What a shot. 
hard to miss three layups in one possession. Kyle Pape with a long three. That is around the rim and out. Dan Harding with another rebound. Gives it over to Jeremy Robinson. He pulls up for a three. And a three by Jeremy Robinson. Might be his first of this game, I believe. And now an 11-point lead for Grand Cove Pacific. John Lane with the ball. He throws up a shot, and he makes it. Nice shot by John Lane. Right side of the free throw line, cutting the lead down to nine. Josh Burnett with the ball. Behind the back, back outside of the three-point line. Gives it to Stan Hardinger. In the paint, throws up a shot on the left side. Going left, right-handed shot goes in. 49-38, Stan Hardinger now at 24 points on the evening. Pape with a missed shot. Polly trying to get the rebound, cannot get it. Jeremy Robinson brings the ball up. Well, Grand Cove Pacific is supposed to be tired. They sure aren't showing it as of yet. Well, I think that'll start to show up maybe in the last 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, that's what I'd be looking for, too. <coughs> Stan Hardinger double team gives it to Farman. Little left handed shot by the basket. It is in. 51 38, 13 point lead with 17 minutes left in the second half. Tavita brings the ball across midcourt for a chosen few. Covered by Jeremy Robinson, throws up a three. And he makes it. Nice shot by Jace Tavita, cutting it to a 10 point lead. Josh Burnett covered by Tavita. Gives it back outside to Jeremy Robinson, covered by John Lane. Jeremy Robinson dishes off to Stan Hardinger, but it bounces off. Caleb Spencer with a steal. He goes coast to coast, left, right-handed, reverse layup, and he goes in. Nice shot by Caleb Spencer, making up for the last three misses. Now an eight-point lead for Grand Cove Pacific. John Cadell bringing the ball up. Covered by Caleb Spencer. Brings it over to Jeremy Robinson. Hold on to it. Stan Hardinger down low to a cutting farm on. Gets the shot blocked by Polly. Nice block by Kaipo Polly, former Roosevelt player. Tavita with the ball. Little spin move, goes in for the layup, and it bounces off, off the basket. Cadell with a rebound. He goes coast to coast, and he makes the basket. Nice little layup by Sean Cadell, and 10-point lead for Grand Cove Pacific. Caleb Spencer with the ball, covered by Cadell. Little screen, now Farmar on Spencer, over by the right corner. Kyle Pape with the ball, covered by Burnett. Top of the key to Tavita. Goes to his left in the paint. Moves to his right, throws up a layup, and is blocked out of bounds. 15-32 left in the second half. And Chris Crawford out of Campbell comes in for John Lane on chosen few. That's Caleb Spencer ready to inbound the ball. <coughs> Pape with the ball, three-point shot. It is out. Gets the rebound, bounced out to him, tries up another three, it is off. Holly with a rebound, but it falls out of bounds, and Cho uh, Grand Cove Pacific will retain possession. Cadell inbounds to Jeremy Robinson. Slowly, very slowly, smart. bringing the ball across midcourt. Smart, very smart. Don't run. Do they have a 10 second violation in this league, or eight seconds? Yes, I'm sure. <clears throat> Stan Hardinger with a shot. But they weren't going to call that, that could have been a violation. Stan Hardinger makes it, now a 12-point lead, 55-43. Tavita with another long three, hits the rim off. Pape with a rebound, pulls it back out, now drives in the lane, goes in for a little layup, gets fouled, and he will go to the line for two. Farmar with a foul for Grand Cove Pacific, good hustle though. Kyle Pape going to the free throw line for two shots, trying to cut the lead to either 11 or 10. And Pape up for his first shot. It is good. Kyle Pape playing for, from Iolani High School with Derek Lowe. Went to the Colorado School of Mines, and he has played professionally in Europe over the years as well. Yeah, but, you know, Derek and Kyle are much different players than me. Sure. They're very smart. I mean, come on. They, some guys take horrible shots, and they, they just don't play the game correctly. But those two guys definitely play the game correctly. Definitely. definitely. Very smart. 10-point lead now as Pape makes both free throws. Jeremy Robinson with the ball. Stan Hardinger gets thrown to the ground by Dan Carter, who helps switch it up. At least to give Dan Carter credit for the sportsmanship. It wasn't intentional, wasn't trying to play dirty. Just in the heat of battle, throws Christian to the ground, but goes over and picks him up right away. Granko with the ball and bounding the Cadell, top of the key. 
Brings it over to his right. Over to Jeremy Robinson. Pushes off Caleb Spencer. And Robinson misses the three. <coughs> Caleb Spencer, Jeremy Robinson in the eye accidentally. And goes over immediately to say sorry to Jeremy Robinson. No, no foul call. Well after the shot. Chosen few of the ball. Kyle Pape bounding. Chris Crawford also in the backcourt. Caleb Spencer on the left. Pape still has the ball. Throws up a two. It's not three. Caleb Spencer picks up the loose ball in the right in the left corner. Brings it back out top to Kyle Pape. <laughs> Covered by Kaika Phillip. Now Farman covering up. Polly has the ball. Gives it over to Spencer. Spencer looks on the baseline. Nothing there. Goes out of bounds. 13 seconds left on the shot clock and chosen few and Caleb Spencer will unbound the ball. And now we've got a timeout by John Lane and chosen few. They trail 55-45. 13-55 left in the second half. Still a close game. Plenty of time left. And we'll see if chosen few can get back in this game. Do you, do you like your team shooting that many three points or is that just more indicative of the summer league? Well, you know, I think three point shooting is something that's evolved over the years because they made a three point line. And I'm not a fan of it, but I looked at the stats and Johnny Avila leads the league with 41 and the next guy is 18. And he was a very, very good three point shooter for me. I remember. But I don't, I don't allow that unless you can shoot the ball that good. Right, it's different if you make it. If you make oh, them, no, I'm not against it, but no. I see so many misses. Well, misses, you, you, you get, hey, don't shoot any more threes. You can't shoot. Them. Right. Coach is a little bit more lenient in this league, so I'm not sure if they're instructing their players not to shoot. We've seen an awful lot by both Well, teams. the only thing about that is that it takes much, much more practice to make a three than it does oh, sure. the other kind of shot. That's why it counts for more. So if, if Kyle Pape driving right. baseline, nothing there. Gives it out to Spencer. He gets the ball knocked away for a second. Polly drives to the basket. Nice little running shot by Kaipo Polly from Roosevelt. And he cuts it to an eight-point lead, 55 points. I like him. He, he's a small forward. I like him. He's active. He plays. A lot of confidence. He's tough. Definitely strong. Looks like he might have smoked up and slimmed down a little bit from high school as well. And he, he, and he definitely doesn't take bad shots. And he's playing for Yakima Valley Community College Yakima. Now. Yakima. Basket is good for Grantco. They keep the lead up to 10. Crawford with the ball, covered by Robinson. Polly with the ball, covered by Farman. Nothing there. Looks for a screen, gets it. Picks up the loose ball again. Over to Spencer in the left corner. Looks at the shot clock. Drives in the lane. He throws up a shot that is good. Caleb Spencer with the basket, now an eight-point lead. Spencer with now 16 points for chosen few. Well, the scoreboard just went out momentarily. Uh-oh. <coughs> there it's back on. Crawford misses, uh, Phillips misses the three. Crawford coming back up court, gets the basket for a fast break, misses the layup, and Phillips with a rebound over to Farman. Stan Ardinger has the ball one on two. He's gonna take it to the basket anyway. Loses the ball, throws it up, catches it as he lost it and tapped it in. 28 points for Christian Stanhardinger. And Polly with another reverse layup. Nice shot by Kaipo Polly. Eight point game, plenty of time left. 12.05, second half. Fidel with the ball. Covered by Kai, uh, <clears throat> Kyle Pape. Gives it over to Robinson. Covered by Spencer. Shot clock down to 11. Jeremy Robbins with another long three, another miss. Farman fought, fights for the rebound, but Polly gets it, gives very, it over to Kyle Payton. Very nice box out by Polly. Very nice. He's given up three, four inches to that kid. Pa Polly with a shot. Misses it. Farman with the rebound. Uh -oh. Stan Hardinger, one on uh -oh. one. Oh, he ain't passing. Uh, I thought that was a travel two. No call. And Stan Hardinger makes the basket. And now John Lane with another timeout. He, he, he's, he's, uh, he's not bad, see? No. We are in a timeout. 10 point lead, 61 51, 11 21 left in the second half. And Grand Co Pacific looking to make it 2 0 on the day and to advance to the championship game next Saturday night at 7 o'clock. 
No, Good turn. A, a lot of these players, Gar, play in this league, and 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 they, they left. I think the broadest broadest brothers went to Canada to right. play. I think uh, Bill Amos went to Europe and played. Budapest, I think. Budapest. There's a lot of guys with so much talent. You know, they go play, and I think that's terrific. And I think everybody should play until it doesn't do anything for them anymore, and and, and then go ahead and get on with their careers. But I think it's very important for those guys that they go to school and get their degree. That's why oh, we sure. always we always redshirted a guy so he could finish his degree stay and stay ahead of the curve. And a year older, a year better, and definitely comes in handy. I'll tell you, Steve Ritchie is is extremely wealthy. Not just wealthy. But what does he do? I remember the former three-point shooting uh, star for HBO. Yeah, he is a money manager for what's that island up by, that they built in the middle of the ocean? I'm not sure. I'll have to look that up. Kyle Pape with the ball for Chosen Few. Takes it in the lane. Nothing there, but he is fouled by Keiko Phillip. Iolani versus Iolani on that one. Okay. And the clock continues to move even though Thanks, it's not man. supposed to. Referee notices it. We'll go over to the scorer's table and they will set the clock back five seconds to 11.02. Bahrain. Bahrain. Okay. <laughs> Big time. And I'm so happy for him. Right. I wish it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was me too. Or you. Yeah. Chase Tavita with the ball. Brings it up to the top of the key. Three-point shot by Tavita. It is good, nothing but net. Cuts the lead down to seven, 61 to 54. Jeremy Robinson with the ball. He'll throw another long three. The long threes have not gone in. Robinson misses. Rebound comes out to Caleb Spencer. He brings it past midcourt, covered by Burnett. Gonna go by you. Yep. Goes in the lane. Right by Throws up a wild shot. It is no good. Stan Harding with the ball. Stan Hardinger fouled by Kyle Pape. Stan Hardinger does a lot of great things, but ball handling is not his strength. And uh, he is fortunate that he got fouled on that one. I think he might have uh, lost control as he headed into the lane. They will retain possession. Only three team fouls right now for Chosen Few. Two team fouls in this half for Grand Co. Pacific. Stan Hardinger with the ball. Spins around to his right. Throws up a bank shot. It's a little too strong. Reyes with the rebound. Gives it over to Spencer. Loose ball. And Kyle Pape comes up with it. Gives it over to Caleb Spencer. Polly down low is open, but Stan Hardinger intercepted the pass. Robinson with the ball, gives it over to Burnett. Left corner, tries a pass. Chase Tavita intercepts it. He brings it across midcourt. In the lane, Caleb Spencer for a three. And it is nothing but net. Four point game. Like Caleb Spencer intercepts the inbound pass, pass midcourt like over to Reyes. Polly down low in the baseline, goes in the lane. Back to Spencer, to DeVita. He drives to the basket, gives it out to Kyle Pate. He tries a shot, it is no good. Stan Harding with another rebound. And as I mentioned, not a good ball handle. We lose the ball, but it is regained by Cadell. Back to Stan Hardinger, goes in for a layup. It is off. Spencer with a rebound. One against four. Jace DeVita is fouled as he goes to the basket. He will to shoot two free throws for chosen few, looking to make it a two point ball game. Three team fouls on both teams. 9.28 left in the half. Chase Tavita at the free throw line. Makes the first shot. That was the only area he needed really improvement on at UH. I thought he did a really good job his senior year. What free throw shooting was an issue. He is, he's a big boy player. Big. But he led, he led the Big West in assists. Assist. Yes, year. he did. Yes, he did. We have a timeout on the court. 9.28 left. Tavita will come back for another free throw. 61-58 is the score. Grand Co. Pacific holding on with a three-point lead. And you mentioned a little while ago, Tony, that you were wondering about the fatigue factor maybe with 10 minutes left for Grand Co. Uh -oh. so it was a 10-point lead cut down to three. So maybe at the 10-minute mark, this has come into play now. And we'll see if Grand Co. can maintain this. And it's going to be tough. You only have seven players. You're really only playing six. 
in this game. Well, it doesn't bother me because I never substituted anyway. I just wonder how it's going to go for Grand Co. again with not substituting that, like not having the luxury to substitute that much. And you've got a couple of guys on the bench. Brian Mason has not played in this half. Oh, there's a couple of guys that haven't even got anywhere near playing. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe fatigue will come into play. I know they want to expand on this lead. We'll see if they can. And Chosen Few, give them credit. They've made a couple of nice runs in this game to get back into it. Coming out of the timeout. Another free throw for Jace Tavita, looking to make it a four-point lead. Zach Busher in the game for Chosen Few. As Polly hits the bench. Caleb Spencer on the bench as well. One free throw coming up for Jace Tavita. And he makes the second free throw. Two in a row for Jace. Two-point game. They're only down by two, 61-59. Stan Harding with the ball, covered double teams now. Keeps on to the, keeps on holding on to the ball, gives it over to Jeremy Robinson over on his left. Oh, he'll shoot it. Jeremy Robinson looking for somebody open. The only person moving is Stan Harding. Covered by Reyes down the baseline, nothing there. Triple team. And that is the shot clock. First violation we have seen all game. And now Chosen Few looking to tie this game up or potentially take the lead. Tavita with the ball. There we go. Advancing past midcourt, covered by Jeremy Robinson. Little spin move. Busher for a three. Three pointer by Zach Busher. He has not played a lot in this summer league. Played just a few minutes here and there. Makes the first three of the game for him. Chosen few now with the lead, 62 61. Grant Cove with the ball. Phillips throws it away, but Robinson picks it up. Cadell with the ball, drives in the lane. Tries a little runner, nothing there. Lane with a rebound over to Zach Fisher. Gives it over to Tavita. Going on one on one against Robinson. Misses the shot going on the left side. Tavita thought he might have been fouled, but good, good no call by the referees. 8-16 left in the game, a one point game. 62-61, chosen few. Robinson gives it over to Sean Cadell from the Army. Covered by Tavita. Brings it back out. They do seem a little bit tired. Stan Hardinger gets the pass down low, puts up a little scoop shot. He doesn't seem to be that tired. Well, all they have to do is throw him the ball every single time. Now, they won't do that, but they, that's all they have to do. He's, 32 points for Stan Hardinger. He, that, he dominates that kid that much. More than half. Tavita with the ball, goes up for a three. It is good, Jace Tavita throwing on, showing up with the offense tonight. He has got 18 points, three rebounds, four assists. And just like that, Chosen Few regains the lead by two. Good call, Tavita was bumping Cadell a little bit too hard, good sportsmanship picking him up. And that would be the fourth team foul for Chosen Few. Cadell inbounding. Knocked out of bounds. Pass attempted for Stan Hardinger. John Lane knocks it out. Robinson gets the ball inbounded from Cadell. Give it over. Little screen by Stan Hardinger. Jeremy hits the backboard on a three. Lane calls a timeout as he picks up a loose ball. And if he didn't call a timeout, it might have been a jump ball. So good call by John Lane as they are up by two. 7-10 left in the second half. Now, Tony, as we get down the stretch, you still think Cho uh, Chosen Few should try to run a little bit more? On Granko, we see a little bit of the fatigue factor maybe coming into play. I think they should. I think they should have been running the whole time, all the time. And shoot lamps, not jump shots. What I've been impressed with in both games today, or now the third game today, all teams that have been down by double digits have no quit in them. They've all bounced back. Uh, first two games coming back almost in the second game where National Fire took the lead. They cut it down uh, to within single digits a few times. But in this game, Chosen Few is down by double digits early. They've come back and regained the lead, and we saw that in the first game with Grand Co. Pacific. 
Um, they were up by a lot. A little strategy came back on them. I'm sure they're remembering that right now, and I'm sure Alan Silver's reminding them of that right now. I think so. You know, um, they had um, Stan Hardinger and Jeremy Robinson and the young man from HPU, the seven-footer, and they were blocking shots and causing a lot of trouble. Now he's not out there, and uh, they look like a different team. They're, they're definitely one step behind. Jones You're talking about uh, Farbod Farmar. Yeah, Farmar. I like him. I, I always like liked him. him. He's been playing great this whole summer, and tonight he had, I think, six blocks in the first game, five early in the first half, and a couple tonight as well. I just think, he throws the ball out of bounds. I just think he could be way, way better than he is. Yeah, but he's improved in the last oh, year, yeah. so definitely. Oh, yeah. oh, no question. No question. Cadell with the ball, trailing by two. Give it to him. Gives it to Stan Hardinger. Oh. Covered by Kavita. So Stan Hardinger is fouled. And he will go to the free throw line. Jace Tavita committing the foul. For Tavita, I believe that's foul number three. Stan Hardinger again at the free throw line. Makes the first. One point game. 33 points for Christian Stan Hardinger. And second one is up and in as well. 34 for Christian, and they tie the game at 65. 640 left in the second half. Spencer with the ball. Gets a screen by Tavita. Gives it up top to Reyes on the left side now. Covered by Stan Hardinger. Loses the ball knocked away by Burnett, but Reyes keeps it, gives it over to Pate. Reyes in the left corner. Drives in the lane, dishes it out to Lane. Shot is short, Cadell with a rebound. Jeremy Robinson bringing the ball, trying to get the lead back for Grant Copas. Wide open. Missed the shot. Stan Hardinger gets the ball, 14 footer. It is off, Lane with a rebound. Less than six minutes left in the half. Tavita will get fouled as he goes up to the basket. And he will look to break the tie of 65-65. So your, your basic strategy, Tony, if you are Grand Co. Pacific, is just get the ball to Stan Hardinger down low, basically. I, I, I think that they will have, no matter who they guard him, you won't be able to guard him. He is that talented a player, especially in this league. He's, he's just good. That's why he has 45 points a game. I mean, come on. I don't know that. I don't think people understand how much 45 points a game is. Yeah. I, I know I've, I've heard some people criticize, well, he shoots too much. Well, but he's making shots, so it's not like he's you know, taking 40 shots a game and taking his points. Like you said, he's making 80% of his free throws. Come on. He's helping his team, definitely. Tavita makes one out of two. Both of them, excuse me, 67-65. Chosen few up by two. Jeremy Robbins with the ball, covered by Kyle Pate. Stan Hardinger ready to set a screen. Go. Another screen. Go. Jeremy Robinson the paint back out to Burnett on the elbow. Burnett is off. Stan Hardinger picks up the loose ball and puts it up and in. Tie game at 67. Tavita with the ball. Throws up a three. Hits the front of the rim. Polly gets a loose ball. Gives it over to Pate. Spencer now for a three on the right side. It is good, nothing but net. And they get a three-point lead, 70-67. Robinson loses the ball. Kyle Pape knocked the ball, tried to save it from going out of bounds, and it's a little short. It does go out of bounds. Grand Co. Pacific will regain possession. 5.06 left in the second half. Robinson looking to inbound the ball. Right baseline. Dan Hardinger by the three-point line, gets it, holds it. Looking for somebody to post up and give it to. Nobody there, gives it back out to Burnett on the left side. Burnett drive, he is fouled. They're gonna call a continuation. Basket is no good, but he'll get two free throws. No, one and one, <coughs> two. Okay. Burnett with five points, two rebounds, and, an, and uh, an assist in this game. At the free throw line for two. It looks like Farmon is about to come back in the game for Grand Coal Pacific. First shot is up and in. Two-point game, 70-68, chosen few lead, Grand Coal Pacific. 
Kaika Phillips comes out. Barbot Barman comes <laughs> back in for Granko. And Burnett makes the second free throw. One point game. Burnett now at seven points. Paper the ball, gives it over to Tavita. Tavita with the ball, pulls back out. Covered by Farman, now goes in the lane. Throws up a left-handed layup, or on the left lane, a right-handed layup, it is no good. Robinson with the rebound, he comes back across midcourt. Tries to put the ball over the top to Stan Harding. Gets the ball, nice shot by Stan Harding, a good pass by Jeremy Robinson in Cho uh, Granco Pacific. Three games to lead, 71-70. Reyes with the ball on the left, drives into the lane, slips. Pape gets the ball over to Spencer. Spencer tries a three, that is off. Polly with a loose ball rebound. And I think we got a loose spot, a uh, wet spot on the ground. The referee stopped play. And we're gonna get a, a towel boy, hopefully. Or a broom boy. 71-7 Grand Co Pacific over Chosen Few, semifinal number one here at Manoa Rec. 402 left in the second half. Well, no, this is a good time, Gar, because you can go by your man and shoot a layup because they're a little bit tired. And, you know, they're not going to defend you as well as they used to. And so uh, it's very important that when you go by your man, you make your shot so you keep the lead all the way till the end of the game by one or two points. Because the pressure is, bothers you. Sure. You don't care who you are. Tavita with the ball for chosen few, trailing by one. Finds Kyle Pate, baseline to Polly. Polly tries a little shot from the baseline, it is no good. Jeremy Robinson picks the ball up, covered by Kyle Pape, passes midcourt. Cadell, not exactly expecting it, gets the pass. Over on the left side, brings it up top. Robinson trying to set a screen, nothing there. Cadell with the ball over to Stan Hardinger by the elbow. Drives in the lane, another right-handed shot is off, hits the ground, nothing there, nothing called. Barmon with the rebound and puts it up uncontested. Three-point lead now for Grand Cole Pacific. 3.15 left in the second half. With that kid in the game, you have a problem. He, he's not a bad player, I like that boy. To beat with the ball, screened by Pate, ah. or by uh, Polly. To beat a miss of the layup. Looks for the foul, nothing called. Robinson with the ball, up by three. Less than three minutes left now. And Robinson throws a dangerous pass, basically 30 feet from the basket, and it tipped out of bound, but they re retain possession. Jeremy Robinson inbounding on the right here, side. Jeremy, right here, give him the ball. Boy. Robinson gets the ball back from Stan Hardinger, drives in the lane, tries a little layup, it is good, and he is fouled. Jeremy Robinson giving Grant Coe a five-point lead, looking to make it six with a free throw. See what I mean about going to the basket? Always go to the basket at this time in the game because players are always overplaying you. For the steal and they get burned. I mean, he just shot a complete, I don't know, layup. What is he? He, he's got 40 points, and Stan Harding got 35 points. Over there. Jeremy Robinson with 17 now. I believe that's his first attempt at the free throw line coming up. And it is off. Savita with a rebound. And he is fouled at midcourt by Jeremy Robinson. Totally Sorry, unnecessary I, foul. No, it's only the 15 foul right. for Granco. Seven for Chosen Few. And they will inbound the ball. Jace Tavita, in front of his own bench. Caleb Spencer with the ball, top of the key. Goes to his left a little. Gives it over to Holly. Loses the ball to Burnett. Take it out. Burnett, nice play by Kyle Pate. To stop a breakaway basket by Joshua Burnett. He fouls him, but that's a good foul. That's a good, that's a good foul. I wish they would have taken it out. And Burnett will go to the free throw line for two. He is a good free throw shooter. Great high school career at Marino. Oh, yeah, great high school career. Yeah. 
First free throw is good, cutting it to a four-point lead for Grant, uh, expanding the lead, excuse me, to six for Grand Cole Pacific, 76-70. Uh, oh, oh. Burnett up for the Gosh. second shot, it is good. 77-70 with 231 left in the second half. Uh -oh. And the scoreboard uh, is turned off momentarily. They will stop play and it is back on. They will continue in just a second. Only a three possession game, but time is not on the side of the chosen few. Kyle Pape with the ball. Over to Reyes in the left corner for a three. It is an air ball. Cadell with a rebound. Almost loses it, and he does. Pape with a steal. He'll go up for a three. That is a big three for Kyle Pape. Gets the steal from Grant Co. And they were down by seven, could have been up to nine. Makes a three off of the steal. And it is now just a four point game. Reyes leaves the game. The only way that was a good shot, Gar, is if it went in. Exactly. And it did. <laughs> Otherwise, it was a very bad shot. Always. Oh, don't. Oh. And Robinson, I guess you would call that a bad shot. Misses a little layup. Burnett picks up the loose ball. Give it to, give it to him. Give it to him. God damn it. Tony Salido wants the ball to get thrown to Christian Stanhart there. Uh, early call foul on Chosen Few. They already in the bonus. And Cadell will go to the free throw line. Cadell, another miss. In the first game, he missed, I think it was six out of seven down the stretch. Really gave Wolf Strategy the opportunity to take that lead back. Again. Makes oh, this one. Didn't look like it. Wasn't a good oh, form. Good shot. Five points. But he makes one. 78 73. Grand Cole Pacific Watch up it. by five. Go in. Kavita gets fouled. And they count it. Wow. That is an NBA continuation. Nice move. Nice shot by Tavita. I just wasn't sure they were going to call that continuation here. That NBA, definitely, that was a continuation. This league, close. Well, I don't know if it was a continuation, but it was the right thing to do, go to the basket. Every and time. he makes the free throw. Two-point game with a minute 34 left in the second half of semifinal number one here. Grand Cole Pacific with the two-point lead. And Alan Silva calling a timeout. No practice shot. You can really see a lot of coaching, though. When you get in close games down the stretch, especially a playoff game, coaching really comes into play. Players can decide it, but the coach can set the stage. Coming up. Well, I think I, 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 think I have to say something, Garrett. I think in a regular season game, you're absolutely right. Coaching is, now becomes extremely important. But in a summer league game where you only see them once a week, Sometimes, a lot of times, kids just do what they want to do, and, you, and you're, you're absolutely destroyed by their choice. So. Well, I, I agree with that most of the time. I think with these coaches, you try to, I mean, Alan Silva's coached in a high school level for a long time. He's been at Chaminad for a while coaching. So at Barrington now, he knows how to communicate with these kids. I'm sure he's given them some good strategy. We will see if John Lane, the player coach tonight for Chosen Few, can equal, uh, equal that. One minute, 25 seconds left in the second half. Two-point lead for Grand Cole Pacific. 78-76. Grand Cole will inbound the ball with Jeremy Robinson right to our right. Is it over to Stan Hardinger? You better right watch corner. out. You better watch out. 12 on the shot clock. 12. 11. Looking for the screen on Stan Hartnigger. Robinson still with the ball. Forces up a shot. Nice oh, shot. Beautiful. Jeremy Robinson from the left elbow makes a nice, tough shot. No, that's and a clutch. In his face. Four point lead for Grant Cole. No, that's a clutch shot. The minute mark. Yes. It's a clutch shot. Two possession game. Or push it off. 
Kavita lose the ball out of bounds. Somehow they say it went off of a Granco player who tipped it. No complaints by anybody on that one. Chosen few and John Lane bounding the ball to the left of his basket. Tavito looked for a three, thought twice, holds on to the ball. Now he drives. And they call a foul on Farbot Farman. I'm not sure about that one. I mean, I guess it was contact, so you'd have to call it. 47 seconds left in this semifinal matchup. Coming up about 20 minutes from now, we will have the second semifinal of the evening. And that will be Solar Universe. Artie Wilson team won their first game earlier today against Clark Hatch Fitness. Tavita misses a free throw. Farman with the rebound. Oh, oh. Cadell with a clear field to the basket. Oh, now Tavita God. picks him up and it's fouls him. That could be an intentional foul. Could be easy. They don't usually call those, but Tavita had his arms wrapped around uh, Cadell, just preventing him from going up and attempting a layup. <clears throat> All they need is make these two. I don't know. He's been missing his free throw. Still a lot of time left, 41 seconds what, left. Look and see what he's, what he's done. What, what is uh, he done now? We have got our, our, our stat Ooh. guy, Frank, here. Frank doing a great job. What's with he stuff. doing, Frank? What's he doing? And made that one. looking at Sean Cadell, that is his ninth point. Nine points for Sean Cadell now. Big time. 82-76, 35 seconds left. Jay Savita with a three. Good defense, and he misses the shot. Farman with a rebound. Kyle Pape with a steal off of Josh Ribbonette pass. Pape really forces the shot and is stuck between the basket and the rim. There'll be a jump ball. Possession arrow goes to Grand Cole Pacific. They were fortunate there. As Reyes comes back in the game for chosen few. John Lane out of the game now, takes himself out. <coughs> Robinson sees Cadell open, breaking towards the basket, the holds out. it back out, using a clock, but he gets fouled. So I don't think, well, the shot clock is off, so I guess you would have to foul, but I might wait a little longer, maybe playing tight D, hoping to get a steal. Maybe with 10, 12 seconds left, you'd want to foul, but not with 21, to me at least. Yeah, but I think four points, six points is two threes. And yeah, two possession game yet. Tough. He makes this, it's over. And Cadell now hitting his free throws. That's, that's, he's hit three in a row now. He wasn't hitting him in the first game, but he's starting to hit him down the stretch of this game in the semifinal. Ah! And he goes back to his old habits, misses it. So a seven point lead, 18 seconds left. Chosen few, needing a three, but Jay Savini goes up for the dunk, and he Shit. misses the one handed dunk. They're calling a foul. And they call a foul on that. It was tough to see where the foul occurred. But it's on Farman. Stan Hardinger not happy with the foul. He's telling him to let him go for the dunk. But to me, that's a good foul. The guy's going to dunk it an easy two with Jay Savita at times struggling on the free throw line. I think it's a good strategy to foul him. But Savita makes him pay at least for the first free throw, cutting it to a six point lead, 83 77. <clears throat> Jace Tavita makes it or not, they're going to have to foul soon. They miss it, gets the offensive rebound. Spencer misses the putback, though. That would have been big. That would have cut it to four. But Pape steals the ball. He throws up a three. That's an air ball. Robinson gets the ball, and he is finally fouled with one second left. Wow. Chosen Few had a couple of opportunities. They would have cut it to one possession with a shot there. They are trailing by six. And to me, if you're going to foul, I would have fouled them with five or six seconds. They let the clock run down to one, then following, fouling Jeremy Roberts. And this game, for all intent and purposes, is over. 83-77, Jeremy Robinson looking to expand on a six-point lead. And Grand Cole Pacific looks to be heading to the championship game <clears throat> next week, even though Jeremy <coughs> Robinson misses the first free throw. And the player of the game, I think we could agree, Tony, would be Christian Stanharding with 38 points. I think so. And we'll see if for the first time today, we do get a player of the game over here. The buzzer will sound. One free throw made by Jeremy Robinson. 84-77 is the final. And again, Grand Cole Pacific, 2-0 and in the day. They can go home and rest. Their work is done. Got to give them credit. I thought that would be very difficult to win two games, especially the first game going down to the wire. They bounce back an hour and 30 minutes later. 
and beat a tough team in Chosen Few. Give them credit. Uh, give them credit. It, it's very difficult, though. Uh, this game is going to be interesting, too, because Tim uh, Shepard, uh, he has a hard road in front of him. You know, if he plays 10 minutes, he's struggling. But you got Derek Lowe. I think any time you have Derek Lowe, you can have a good chance, and we'll see about that game in a minute. Oh. And that game will start in about eight, nine minutes from now, Solar Universe in the second semifinal against Clark Hatch. But as we mentioned, the first game is the team shake hands. What a game, 84-77. I, I I'm surprised that it was a little easier for Grant Cohen, their second game of the day, than their first game, which they won by three. Yeah. But a great effort. Alan Silva, great coach, done a good job, and he is going back to the championship game next Saturday. Well, I'll tell you, you know, I, I personally think Stan Hardinger could have had 10, 12 more points if they threw him the ball, but they threw him the ball so much he just scored, and there was nothing you could do about it. So. And again, 38, I think, you know, it's below his average. But I think you can't complain if you're a Christian, although knowing Christian, he still might. Yeah, right. But you know he missed some shots that he could normally make and maybe didn't get the ball at times, but give him credit. Again, he does a good job, and he is a leading scorer as they advance to the championship game. I, I, I'm not sure if I would have picked any of the teams before today that could win two. We'll see if Solar Universe can duplicate that and go 2-0 and themselves. Well, Clark Hatch has some pretty tough hombres. <coughs> and, and I don't think you can push them around. I think they pushed around other teams, but they can't push these kids around. Now, I'm looking at Clark Hatch. 